When you talked last night about the team still needs to improve, what is it that you would like to see them improve upon? I think individual things, obviously. When you break games down, obviously, you're, you're always trying to improve. Uh, I think that putting different guys in the lineup, you guys have to adjust to that a little better. Uh, there's always a familiarity with by position or sides you're playing on defense. Uh, obviously, it goes game by game, face-offs, situations, things like that. So there's a lot of individual situations that team, both teams will want to improve on. Since you guys are up 2-0, is there any issues of complacency, do you think? Nope. <laughs> you know that they, obviously, they, they will be in a you hate to where they use desperate situations, but if that's exactly the situation that they will be in in game number three now. I think they played a desperate game last night. They played really well, and we were able to to manage our way through it. I think we knew they were going to have a try and come out and try and establish a floor check. They did that in the first shift. They were going to try and uh, you know, play a physical game. It allowed them to draw a couple of penalties in the first period, and we were able to get through that. So it's not going to think that either team is going to surprise each other and how they're going to play. Several penalties from Alec Martinez last night. Any concern with his play? What is quantified several? I think there were three. <laughs> Pardon? Three? Yeah. It's two stick penalties. How's Andre holding, holding in a hooking penalty? What about Kopitar? What's his situation? Oh, well, he finally got some stitches in his legs. <laughs> <laughs> there goes the modeling curve. <laughs> <laughs> Just looking Slovenian athlete. <laughs> no, he's not. <laughs> yes, he is. <laughs> but you weren't surprised at all to see him come back, were you? Hockey players, what difference does it make for Sanzi Cope? There's hockey players are different than other athletes. They get hit in the face and they get cut and you go and you get sewed up and you come back out and play. I've very seldom in 30 some years seen a player that doesn't do that. A few minutes of surgery, they're back out there. Yeah. <laughs> Spit your teeth in your hands, give her a coach. <laughs> Is there any update on Sutter? Pardon? He's fine. Yeah, yeah. He's doing an interview right now. <laughs> can can we expect him in game three? Pardon? To play? Will he play in game three? No, I won't be playing in game three. <laughs> I'm not available. Probably good in the corner still. <laughs> Daryl, a lot of guys last night talked, well, at least two, talked about how the experience of last year kind of prepared them for you know, just sort of playing an even keel game last night, and, and that kind of helped in the comeback. They, they didn't get too concerned about anything. Did you find that to be the, the case on the bench with the mood with the guys? We've had that experience this playoff already. I mean, we were down 2 nothing in the last series. We were out of the series. We were down 2 nothing early in game three or four, and we were out of the game. And that's what playoffs are about. I said it last night, it's sort of frustrating to answer those questions, quite honest, because, you know, like, our playoffs are four out of seven series, which means gen generally when you break it down, every series goes six games, which means somebody wins four, and if you do your math, and somebody loses two. <laughs> so I've, you don't win every period, you don't win every shift, and you don't win every game. Shark said... If you get three pass quick, you're supposed to win the game. Uh, do you feel like they they made some inroads there? And, and yeah, well, first off, you know, Cam. Really, if you score three goals, you should win playoffs. That's that is a fact. You can break that down too. And if you score three, you should win. But uh, inroads are a big part of their success. Clearly, is their power play. So last night, their power play, they scored uh, I think five seconds after power play so really that counts as one but the difference in the game was special teams 3-1 so inroads are are irrelevant it's how basically it's how it breaks down your special teams and five and five and who gathers those minutes and how they play in those minutes you don't think anybody ever totally figures out Jonathan Quick because he's he's too good at it well last series everybody said they figured him out You know, I didn't know much live because I hadn't seen him live. Basically, uh, my best info on, on Louis would have been uh, scouting and uh, 
uh, pre-pro and you know coming out of Lewiston and and being a kid that was a high pick and and was probably kept a little bit miscast in it where uh, you know everybody thought he was going to be a big scorer mm -hmm. and, you know which happens to a lot of those kids in the first round and then it takes them some time to to uh, settle into that role and most of them have to quite honest change organizations to do it but I think uh, you know Louis was a good American played really well in the American League and and uh, really good skill set and I think you know obviously when I came in there was I felt a little bit different about Trevor than probably other guys did and I think it's helped him. You talk about him being think of him differently. Could you elaborate on that? Well, because not every player has a. If everybody was a great goal scorer, then, geez, we'd have twelve of them, right? right? <laughs> but not everybody is a great goal scorer. So find his role and and make them feel comfortable. With it. How did you think the the Thornton and Kopitar thing went last night? Um, just you know, when they when they got matched up against each other, how did you think that? Well, it's they're, they're two big guys and. Ultimately, they're both teams' top two centermen at the end of the day. So I don't have a problem playing against them. But uh, you know that matchup in itself is a good matchup, mm. right? But who's playing with those two guys and how they play impacts that matchup more than anything else. When Joe wants to kick it into another gear, he's pretty. Big handful, isn't he? Well, he's a handful in, D in our zone because he's a big guy who hangs on the puck and he's going to compete to make plays. Mm -hmm. And that's the strength of his game. And last night he was on in the big part of the possession. Part of his game last night was his face-off. Yeah. If you look at it, he was a dominant guy in the face-off. When you win that many, you rarely see that high of a... You might mm -hmm. see a checking guy win uh, 11 or something like that. But to see that high of a number... And primarily, uh, offensive zone faceoffs too mm. is fairly significant. You talked about the, you know, the insignificance of whether you're 2 or two nothing. But do you is that something you have to tell the guys, or do they know already from experience that it doesn't guarantee you anything? And I think our players have, you know, I don't think that's something I don't have to make a big, you know, make a big stand about. I think even though we're, we could say we have experience, we're still a, a lot of guys that haven't, mm -hmm. playing guys that haven't had much at all. Quite honest, when you do the two teams, San Jose has, quite honest, 10 or 11 guys over 30 years old. They actually have a hell of a lot more experience at it than we do. But the guys know how tough it is to go into that building, even at the, you know, yeah, I don't think, playoffs yeah, on I don't the line. Think, you know, I think we're really familiar with it being a division. It's, uh, I don't me, I, was not, I couldn't care less if we're up, down, tied, whatever. You're just still trying to get everybody to play their best best games, that's all. When, when you were there, did you think that building was an advantage for you? The, the noise level, the ceiling, the, the way once it contained we, Once noise? we became a good team. Yeah, only then. Yeah. <laughs> the building doesn't win for you? Yeah. <laughs> once we became a good team, and you know, the last, you know, the that's where it does make a difference, and it's still it's one of the old buildings that's right on top of you, which is that's still the biggest difference in the home road. Everybody makes a big di big deal, but quite honest, mm -hmm. most of the buildings are generic, just different colors. Mm -hmm. But that one isn't. But that one's still one of the old ones, so it's still you know Chicago's able to recapture, pull the emotion across the road again. Mm -hmm. San Jose is one of the smaller buildings that has a way of right. noise staying there, and that's. That's still one of the that's still one of the fun parts, and you know you know that too. That's say when you you go to the big buildings that are traditional, not hockey buildings. Yeah. You're a pretty even keeled guy, but just the last couple of minutes of that game last night, get the heart beating a little faster. No, I was just trying to make sure. They're quite honest, I'm one of the right guys on the ice all for the uh, knowing that it was five and four, then five and three, then five and four. And you got to get trying to have the right guys, fresh guys out there, and that was more important. Darrell, 45 and 17 is the record for home teams this year. Is it 
just uh, coincidence, or is there? I think do it when it's all over, and then then you'll get a better read, right? Seems to go in cycles, though, because last year I think everybody was talking about how many road wins the teams yeah. won and why why home ice wasn't an advantage yeah. anymore and blah blah blah. But do you think it's just a? I think one the of first game. Like I think once you get past the first game, she's flipped. Mm. You know, what? if somebody comes in and gets game one back, and it's then it resets it. Mm. I just think that that has more of an impact on things. Can you share some thoughts on uh, Tanner Pearson and Lyndon Bay skating with the big club rather than with the Black Aces? No. Jared Stoll and Kyle Clifford aren't skating with either one of them. So, well, Cliffy is skating with the other guys now because he can't have contact. But so I'd rather have close to simulated team. Will Clifford travel to San Jose? team uh, did a great job this year of limiting shots on goal against uh, 66 for San Jose first two games. Is there an emphasis of trying to bring that number down just a little bit? Actually, the average in the playoffs is 32 against per team, so taking uh, probably a few more power plays. Just do it last night, how many shots they had on the, they had four in the first shift and 11 in the first period and eight of the 11 were first shift in power plays and we had 18 in the third and they had four, so just do it to the power plays. Teams are a little more committed to pounding pucks in the power play in the playoffs than they are any other time. So I know it's a stat that is I couldn't even care less about quite honest. What stats do you pay attention to? Like which are which are the ones that make you sit up and take notice? Uh, I do a lot of head to head stuff. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, and because that does impact because top guys play a lot, it's a, it's a fact. And how much they are producing against each other or what they're trying to generate against each other or uh, or what lines they're trying to do against each other. Or, uh, you know, you look at last night, that's an important stat. I mean, you don't have to be, it sounds like they had five and five had struggled to score. And so you know last night, you don't have to be, my feeling was that their defense was going to be a lot more involved in it, mm -hmm. and they were, and their defense scored two goals. So you break that down into chance, chances, things like that, and they were more involved in it. Our defense can clearly do a better job of that other than Dowdy last night. Uh, I think he had five or maybe nine total attempts, and he had five shots. After that, we were not nearly involved. Things mm -hmm. like that, we were not nearly as involved. Or what we're getting from the outside, from some guys that are looked on as goal scorers or shooters for their team, what they're doing in the series, mm -hmm. uh, or, uh, things like that. I imagine you had some texts or calls uh, after last night's game. Any interesting ones from your brothers? Or mm -hmm. no? No, I didn't actually. They're all going to the Memorial Cup. <laughs> <laughs> Last year you said this team's quiet. I think you said they're all awesome, quiet guys. Is that still sort of the, the way it is? Because some people are saying that, that without Greener and yep. Jared, it's a little less, a little yep. quieter. Yep, that's up to the group to take that. I'm not going to be their cheerleader. Are you sensing some guys are sort of stepping up a little bit more without those two in there? Or? I don't really pay attention not that I'm, to it. No. I don't think that's natural for somebody to all of a sudden become Change, a, yeah. become a lay the put their foot down and say this is what we're doing tonight. Yeah. <laughs> if that's not natural for them, they're not going to do it. So don't you know? I don't expect that.